Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. Today we're going to take a look at the limited edition Zero Tolerance 0999. All right, so here we are with the limited edition Zero Tolerance 0999, another super impressive limited edition knife from Zero Tolerance designed by Jim McNair, same guy who designed the 777 and 888. He's one of their internal design guys. He always says that it's a team effort, but I'm gonna give him the credit on this one because it's a really impressive design, really impressive engineering on this. Big kudos to the manufacturing team over there because they made a really cool, really impressive knife. And uh, this is another one of the limited editions that, as of the time of the video, you probably will not be able to buy from me because I haven't put them up for sale yet while I'm recording this. But by the time I upload the video, they will have been uh, up for sale and they usually go in a couple of minutes. But I wanted to show it to you because, like I said, it's a really impressive design, really impressive engineering and manufacturing on this. And for those of you where this is outside your budget or you weren't able to get one, I wanted you to be able to take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look at the other stuff that comes with the knife. You get a certificate of authenticity, which has some specs on it. So let's talk about those real quick. So the steel on it is CTS-204P and D2. And it's actually two steels welded together. So the cutting edge is the 204P and the upper part is the D2. And then you've got that carbon fiber insert in there as well. Handle on it is titanium and carbon fiber. The blade is 4.1 inches. The closed length is 5.6 inches. And then the overall length is 9.1 inches. Some other specs they have on there. Proprietary composite blade. They're just talking about the two different steels welded together. Carbon fiber insert. KVT ball bearing. So super smooth opening action on this, which we'll go over very in depth. And then titanium handle, we talked about that. And then the one piece titanium frame lock and backspacer. We'll take a look at that a lot more closely here in just a minute. And then here is the box. Just so you can see what's on the inside. It comes in some bubble wrap. And then you have the manual that they include with all of their knives or all the ones that I've seen anyway. But it's a nice packaging. They actually have an outer box that this comes in as well. And then uh, I don't know about the other dealers, but we also put that in an outer box as well. So you get a whole bunch of boxes in one just to make sure the knife is super protected. And uh, you know, you're buying this really nice limited edition knife. We wanna make sure the packaging gets to you in good condition. And it's nice that they take care of that. And then we add another level on top of it just to make sure. So that's the box. Let's take a closer look at the knife. I know I'm going to get some complaints in the comments. Why did you look at the packaging? Because people ask about the packaging, man. People always ask about it. So let's take a closer look at this thing. I know I've said it a couple times, but this knife is really impressive. Just look at it. Look at the way everything flows together, the way the materials are put together, the composite blade, the carbon fiber insert. I know I gush a lot about zero tolerance because I tend to review the knives that I really, really like. I really, really like Zero Tolerance, and this one is just, it's just really cool. It's got that futuristic design to it, very good feel in the hand, surprisingly lightweight, because you can see a lot of material where material would traditionally be, it's not there. You got the carbon fiber all over the place, so over the size of the knife and the size of the blade, it is surprisingly light. And then you look at the design touches and the engineering touches, like the uh, one piece backspacer and lock bar. So let's take a look at this. So you can see this is one piece here. There's no seam in there. That's not a super tight seam. And you can see it's engraved over that. You got the 0999 and watch how it flows. So let's take a look. Let's watch it go around and then all the way around into the backspacer. That's one piece. And they actually have another piece on there where you can see the seam right there where this piece is another piece. I guess I'd be super incredibly impressed if they managed to get all of that in one piece, maybe on the next uh, knife of the year that they design, they'll get that in there. But still really impressive machining and engineering on this. And you've got the inlay there on the blade. You got that carbon fiber and titanium inlay. At least I assume that is titanium in there. I don't know if they actually mentioned that anywhere. And let's take a closer look at the blade itself just so you can see where they weld the two steels together, you can see that line in there, that kind of copper color in there. And then they've got the two different steels. So you got the 204P down here and then the D2 with the carbon fiber inlay up here. Another thing they did on the finish of the blade, I don't know how well it shows up on camera because you have to look pretty closely in person for you to actually be able to see it. But you can see you have the machined look. You've got those vertical lines, the machined look on the blade. You've got it up here on the top. But then on the flat parts of the blade, 
over in here, you actually have a stoned wash, a stone washed finish, stoned wash. I think that's uh, I think that's something else. But you have a stone washed finish on the flat parts around here, which I'm guessing they did before they did the machining of the knife, and then they machined all the rest of it off. So you've got a pretty cool two-tone finish to it, or if you want to call it two-tone, two, two finishes of basically the same tone. Uh, you've got that machined look, and then the stone-washed look. Very cool combination. I don't know how well it translate on, translates on camera, but uh, in person, it gives it a very subtle enhancement. Really cool custom pivot on there. You've got the carbon fiber running across the handle. And you can see a little bit better now that it's zoomed in, the machined lines on the handle and then on the backspacer part up here and then the smooth up here, the engraving. Don't know what Jim was doing with that right there. Got a little bit of, little bit of devil's work right there. I know he's watching this and he's probably like, Marshall, I can't believe you pointed that out. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, man, come on. <laughs> Let's keep, keep on uh, turning around and taking a look at it. You've got a machine pocket clip with that same lined machining on there. And then you've got the triple nine or the 6660 on the pocket clip as well. More carbon fiber. You see the other side of that custom pivot. And then the back here, you got some nice jimping there on the top of the blade. You got a cutout, some other nice machining in there. Another nice little cutout in there. Just very, very cool design. Really impressive what they managed to do with a CNC machine. Let's talk about the action on it. So you've got the KVT ball bearing system that they use in uh, all of their new knives that I can think of. All the new uh, flipper folders anyway. You know, they have a, a tomahawk and a fixed blade and stuff like that. Those obviously don't have KVT. But I believe all the knives they came out with last year all had KVT. So it's a sealed ball bearing system that when you take the knife apart or you have to send it in for warranty service, you don't have to worry about ball bearings go all over the place. It's just a sealed little washer, plastic washer with ball bearings inside it. And you get the ball bearing action and you get a nice sealed system that's easy to maintain, holds up really well. And if it ever happens to have any issues, it's easy to replace and uh, maintain. Really great action on it. You can see I'm not flicking my wrist at all. So to help with that action, I zoomed out a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better. You've got some jimping there on the flipper just to give you a nice purchase on there. Not that it really needed it. Even if it was smooth, it would probably be fine, but you can see your finger's not gonna slip off there when you're flipping and it just helps it make it that much easier. And it's not really aggressive jimping. They smooth it off just a little bit to the point where your finger gets good purchase on there, but it's not gonna shred your finger like some of the other knives on the market. And uh, that's been a big pet peeve of me. I always touch on the jimping because I like jimping that holds your finger or your thumb in place, but that doesn't shred it. And they did a good job balancing those two uh, with this knife. Another note on the action on there is the detent. Zero Tolerance does a really good job of fine tuning their detents to the point where you can see I'm putting pressure on that flipper and the knife isn't just coming open. If you have a weak detent on there and you don't put a lot of pressure on the flipper, the knife just kind of comes open a little bit and doesn't properly flip. But they fine tune the detent on these really, really well to the point where it doesn't come open super easily, but it comes open easily enough that when you put the proper amount of pressure, that detent breaks and then it just fires open very reliably, very easily. I mean, if you put enough pressure on it to break that detent, it's pretty much impossible to make it not flip out all the way and lock in place every time. I'm actually trying. I'm trying right now to do it and uh, I can't do it. So really well-tuned detent and then the KVT ball bearing system and the way they have it all manufactured and put together helps with all of that for sure. But there you can see the action on the blade again. Pretty cool. How you can see some of the inner workings of the knife through those cutouts. All right, let's take a look at some other parts more up close. There's that zero tolerance engraving. There is that machining again, the cool look to the carbon fiber. It got that nice matte finish to it, so they didn't buff it to a super shiny finish, which I like. I'm not a big fan of really shiny, gaudy knives. 
And uh, again, I, I like the matte finish. Got a little bit of grippiness on there as well. There's your hardware pieces. There's the pocket clip up close with that. Make sure we got that proper focus on there with that triple nine. Oh, wait, that's not a triple nine. That's a 666. Shame on you, Jim McNair. <laughs> I know I'm going to get a strongly worded email <laughs> after this video. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You did it. Let's take a little bit closer look at the pocket clip and how they have that integrated in. You can see that there is no attaching hardware on the exterior of the knife. So they must do it inside through there, back in there. There must be a screw or something holding it in place. So another thing that just makes it give it a, just a clean, smooth look overall. Got the two pieces, the seam right there where they come together. So you got this piece of the handle here and then the backspacer piece and the lock bar piece. And you can see very well centered blade. Got that little line of the weld, the two steels coming together. Nice machining down in there as well. So there is the triple nine. Let's take a look at it versus the triple seven and the triple eight, just to see how they compare in terms of size and design. All right, so here we have the triple seven, the triple eight, and the triple nine. You can see where the design inspiration of the triple nine came from. It's like Jim was sitting down and he said, hey, these two won knife of the year each year. Why don't we take and combine them into one knife? <laughs> and then you have the triple nine. Take the carbon fiber, take that really cool machine titanium, and put them into one single knife. The 777 is honestly my favorite knife of all time from any manufacturer. Uh, I love, love, love this knife. The weight, the feel, the action on it and everything. But from a design and engineering perspective, the 999 is just incredible. From a production manufacturer producing something like this, super, super impressive. And the 888, another favorite for sure. Let's open them all up just so you can see, get an idea of the size. The 777 is definitely the lightest of the bunch with all that carbon fiber in there, but you can see it's also a little bit smaller than the 888 and the 999. So the 888 and the 999 are really close in terms of size. Looks like the 999 is just ever so slightly longer. You got a quarter inch or half inch in there, and then the 777 is significantly shorter than the other two. Well, significantly. It's not a it's not a ton shorter, but it is definitely noticeably shorter than the other two. Let's see if we can uh how do we how do we get a we get a flashlight box and line these up just so we can make sure we got an accurate there we go. Just to give you an idea of uh how they line up against each other. Turn them around a little bit just so you can see the different sides. So we've had a lot of people asking how they compare. Let's turn each one around just so you can see the different sides. Each one is a really impressive design. Hopefully I'm not inflating Jim's ego too much, but uh, man, these are really nice. So he deserves the praise on these for sure. So let's put the 777 and the 888 back away. We'll talk about the 999 a little bit more. So I'm not going to do any cutting tests or anything like that. I will leave that to some other YouTubers, but it comes with a great edge on it. I mean, you can run your finger across and just feel that they put a very, very nice edge on it. And the grind on it is, as always, really smooth and even. And I really like the way they have the machining marks on the 204P. We'll kind of play it in the light just so you can see what that looks like. And then, of course, you have your typical engraving on there. So you have the model number. You've got the Kai USA. You've got the, the serial number. And then you have the uh, CTS-204P, the type of steel. They didn't put D2 up here. So I guess just the cutting edge is what they put the steel on. And then you got the ZT logo on the other side. And then, I didn't really show this before, but they also have an engraved zero tolerance there on the handle, which is cool. A nice, cool little touch. Pretty subtle on there, so it's not something that just pops and glares like some other manufacturers where they write their name or engrave their name across the entire handle. I won't name any names, but I'm sure you, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about already. And, uh, you know, just the engraving touches on here are nice and subtle, and I think they go well with the design. You know, the black of the engraving goes well with the black of the carbon fiber. Nice touches like that. Got it from this angle. I really like the look of the welded steels 
as they go together. It's a really cool look. I saw a video or some pictures, like a process pictures of how they put those together. And it was a really interesting process. It's really neat to see how they do that on their different knives. And they've done it on some different ones. I think they even had a leak that had a couple metals welded together, but they did it on the original version of the 777. I unfortunately don't have one of those yet. I will acquire one someday. They've done it on a, on several different knives and it's a uh, really neat process. It just gives it a very cool look. And I haven't heard anything. People always ask about the integrity. Is it going to cause it to have any break lines or anything like that? And I haven't heard that. I haven't heard it uh, causing any issues with the integrity of the, the steel or breaking or anything like that. Not that anyone would put a knife like this to super abuse. If you do, shame on you. Not that you know you shouldn't carry it. Not that you shouldn't cut with it. But uh, it's so nice. It's so pretty. <laughs> Don't abuse it. Be nice to it. Buy a beater if you want to uh, pry things open with it. Something I didn't mention earlier, you have the lock bar insert in there. So you have titanium on the handle, and then you have a stainless steel blade. Titanium is a relatively soft metal. Very, very well hardened stainless steel is hard. And uh, the titanium, people flipping this all day long, you know, all sit in front of the TV and annoy our girlfriends and wives while we flip this all day long. It's going to rub against that stainless steel and it's going to start to wear down and uh, cause it not to lock up all that well. So zero tolerance on their knives, or all their recent knives anyway, they've been putting lock bar inserts. So they put an insert of stainless steel down in there. So you've got stainless steel against stainless steel. It wears a lot better. And then if you ever do happen to flip it 50,000 times and it causes enough wear where it doesn't lock up super perfectly and properly, then you can replace that because it is replaceable. You've got a couple of little screws down in there and uh, you can take those out and Zero Tolerance will send you a replacement or you can send it in for warranty repair and they'll replace it. So it's a really nice touch on there. Uh, you don't see that on a lot of knives. You're starting to see it on, on more and more but it's something that Zero Tolerance does across their line, not just on their super high-end limited edition stuff. You know, mentioning the lock, you can see perfect lockup right out of the gate. It doesn't stick at all. Titanium against stainless steel, that's another thing, is that a lot of times it can stick and it's super smooth. You can hear, well, let's do it up against the microphone. No grinding, so you don't have titanium that's just grating against stainless steel like on some other knives. So it's really easy to unlock. Even if you push over on the lock bar, it still disengages very easily, but not to the point where it's going to accidentally come disengaged while you're using the knife. So it locks in place very well and very securely, and it's easy to unlock. Two things that I definitely look for in an EDC knife, because a lot of times you only have one hand. You know, you only have one hand when you're opening and closing this thing, and that's kind of the purpose of a lot of modern folders is that uh, you can open and close them one-handed in the U.S. anyway. I know some other countries out there, you can't get knives like this, or at least you can't carry them. But a lot of times when you're cutting, you have something in your other hand. So it's very nice to have touches like that where the opening and closing is very, very easy. Another nice touch that they have on the lock bar is over travel protection. And what that means is that uh, there are a lot of frame lock knives on the market that you push the frame lock out and you can just keep on continue pushing it. So you can just push it as much as you want and it won't stop. And titanium is not the best with memory. So you can bend it too far and have it not bend properly back into place and your knife won't lock up. Well, they actually have a piece in there that is machined. You can kind of see, you kind of see that silver piece down there through that crack and uh, that stops it. I'm actually continuing pushing on this and that's as far as it will go out because there's actually a piece of metal down in there. The titanium, I think it's part of the titanium of the frame lock, either that or it's part of the lock bar insert. It's kind of hard to see down in there and uh, I'm too lazy to take it apart. <laughs> so it's, it's one of the parts of the knives, of the knife that stops it from over traveling and actually hits this part of the frame on the inside and uh, keeps it from traveling too far. So you don't have to worry about bending it out too far and just ruining the frame of the knife because this would be a bummer of a knife to ruin, to break the blade, to do something stupid to it, 
because uh, it's a limited edition and they didn't make very many. So if you happen to have a warranty issue, it might not be something that you can get fixed in terms of having a replacement knife or anything like that. So don't do anything stupid with this knife. Don't do anything that has the potential of breaking it, which of course regular use is not going to do anything even remotely bad to this knife, but don't try to pry with it. Don't do anything that might damage it. Don't uh, stick it in a wall socket or anything like that, because if you break it, then you probably won't be able to get another one, at least not in terms of a warranty replacement. So there you go. That is the Zero Tolerance Triple Nine designed by Jim McNair. Very impressive knife. Again, I apologize. I'm sure as of the time of this video, especially if you're watching it after the day that I upload it, these are definitely not available from me. But uh, if you're willing to fork out an even larger chunk of change, then you could probably get one of these on the secondary market if you can find people that are willing to part with them. I definitely think it's worth it. If you're a collector, if it's not too much money for you, it's definitely worth the money. It's a very cool knife, and I think it will hold its value for sure for a long time and uh, probably be worth a decent amount more on the secondary market if the 777 and 888 and other limited editions are any indication. Can't buy it from me, but you can buy other zero tolerance models. We keep a large amount of production zero tolerances in stock. And if you want to find out when we are going to get more of the limited editions, make sure you sign up for zero tolerances uh, newsletter. They send out an email telling people when the knives are going to be coming out and where you can buy them. And uh, they usually go live at noon on a Wednesday or Thursday, generally, sometimes different days of the week. But make sure you sign up for their newsletter. Make sure you follow us on social media and you can find out when future knives like this go up for sale so you don't have to pay those crazy secondary prices. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com.